Okay, uh, let's look at the basic derivative rules. All right, so first one, constant rule. All right, if you take the derivative of a constant, uh, derivative of a constant is always zero. All right, the reason is if you uh, sketch the graph of a constant function, it's going to be a horizontal line. And the derivative tells you about the slope of the tangent line but the uh, horizontal line will have a slope zero. So that's why derivative of a constant is zero. All right, and uh, here's an example. All right, so this is a fancy notation for derivative. You could have, uh, you can write it as a pi prime would be the derivative. It's exactly the same thing as this. Uh, this is a fancier notation d over dx means take the derivative with respect to x of pi, right? Pi is a constant, so derivative of any constant is always zero, right? All right, second rule is a power rule, right? So if you take the derivative of x to the n, derivative is going to be, so put n in front, so n is in front, and uh, keep the same quantity uh, uh, variable x and subtract one from the power. So you have a n minus one power, All right? So here's an example. If you have uh, f of x equals x to the nine halves, if you take the derivative of that, uh, first you put the power in front, so it's gonna be nine over two. Right, then keep the variable x, then subtract one from the power. So nine halves minus one would be nine halves minus two halves. So it's going to be seven halves, right? So that's the derivative. All right, uh, third one is called the constant multiple rule, right? If you have a function multiplied by a constant, then you want to take the derivative of this whole thing. You can actually pull the constant, uh, so pull this constant outside of the derivative, right? Just like the limit. So you can put c outside, so constant c. Then you just have to take the derivative of the function f of x, so f prime of x, right? And uh, fourth one, and uh, fifth one, I guess, uh, so sum and the difference rule. Uh, so if you have a sum of two functions, say f of x plus g of x, and when you take the derivative, you can actually just take the derivative of each function separately, then uh, carry out the addition. So you would have uh, f prime of x plus uh, g prime of x, right? So you can just take the derivative of each term and uh, do the addition later. And I'm too lazy to write the brand new one, so subtraction works the same way. You can just uh, take the derivative of each one, then carry out the subtraction later. All right, so let's look at a couple of examples, all right? So let's say g of w is equal to five over 9w to the fourth power plus 5 times uh, q root of w, right? So we want to find the derivative of this function. And the first thing we do is so we're going to rewrite a little bit, right? So you have a constant. You have a constant here, 5 ninth, right? So that's just a constant. So I'm going to just write that it right in, put that right in front, 5 ninth, right? Then you have x to the fourth on the bottom. So you have, uh, uh, sorry, w to the fourth on the bottom. So since this guy is sitting on the denominator, it has to be a negative power. So it's going to be w to the negative full power. All right. Then uh, you have a 5 right here, which is just a constant. So we can just put the 5 in front. So this is just a constant multiple, right? and w to the, right? So cube root is equivalent to one-third power. 
right? So we just rewrote this function, right? We can find the derivative. So g prime, capital G prime of w is equal to, right? So put the negative 4 in front, but the, you have 5 ninth already, so it's going to be negative 4 times 5 ninth would be uh, negative 5 times 4 is 20 over 9 w to the right subtract 1 from negative 4 so it's going to be negative 5 power right then put the one third in front so but the 5 is already there so it's going to be 5 thirds right and w right subtract 1 from uh, one third would be negative 2 thirds Right, so that's the derivative of uh, g of w. All right, we can apply um, uh, these properties, these rules, without really knowing the formula of the functions. All right, so let's say uh, f prime of two is given to be three, and g prime of two is given to be negative one. All right. Then h of x is a combination uh, negative 4 f of x plus 5 g of x minus 9. We want to find h prime of 2. Right? Before we find h prime of 2, we're going to find uh, h prime of x. All right? So again, here, we can just take the derivative of each term and also constant multiple, so we can kick the constant out. So you have a negative 4 is a constant multiple, all right? Then you just have to take the derivative of f of x, so f prime of x, plus uh, 5 is kicked out, and you take the derivative of g, so g prime of x. All right? derivative of negative 9 is 0, since negative 9 is a constant. All right, so if you want to find h prime of 2, all you really have to do is plug in x equals 2 in this formula. So it's going to be negative 4, right? So f, f prime of 2 is given to be 3. So negative 4 times 3 plus 5 times, right? Now g prime of 2 is given to be negative 1. All right, so this is going to be uh, negative 12 uh, minus 5. So that's going to be negative 17. All right, so that's the derivative uh, h prime of 2. All right, that's it. I hope that uh, this was clear.